Welcome to the last wrap up of 2021. It is no longer 2021. That's my bad. My uploading skills and my video editing skills are not that great. So I'm trying my best here. <laughs> But I read seven books in 20, the last month of 2021. Some of them were not great. I will say that I finished 2021 on a sour note. Kind of sucked. But I'm over it. I'm reading good things. Whatever. We're moving on. But I'm here to talk to you about the books that I did read in December. I keep wanting to say 2021 instead of December. And I don't know why my brain is doing that. But this is my December wrap. For a little insight, here is my little bullet journal spread for December. I tried to draw a Christmas cactus. Don't ask me to draw the flowers, I'm not that impressive. Um, as you can tell, I worked really hard the last couple days of reading. Tried my best, um, and then those are my review spreads. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right in. The first book that I finished, I gave four stars to, and it was my last reread for a while. I don't plan on rereading anything for a really long time now. And it is Reunited by Colleen Hewick. This is the third book in the Reawakened series. It is Egyptian mythology in modern day following this girl Lily who finds a mummy in a museum and he happens to need to save the world. But obviously it was all set up by the gods and they intervene a bunch of times and there's a quest and an adventure, things go wrong. I'm not going to tell you too much because this is the third book and you've missed a whole lot up to this point. I really like this series as like a comfort series for me but I know that it is super inaccurate because I have been studying Egyptian mythology and gods and stuff and wow this is really off. But I do appreciate the story anyways and it is a comfort read. I really enjoy Colleen Hewitt's books just for the magical element of gods coming into modern day like Percy Jackson I guess anyways. And that's why I love this series and I probably will never get rid of it. The next book I read was probably one of my favorite books of the year. Actually it is. It's on the list of my favorite books of the year. I did add it and I slow burned it. It was totally worth it and I think you all should read it. And that is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitage. I gave it five stars obviously. If I could have given it more I totally would have. But this follows a girl named Poppy or Penelope who has been deemed the maiden because she was blessed by the gods. She is veiled when she goes out in public. She's not allowed to talk to people. She's not allowed to even eat around people. She has to eat in the sanctity of her own room. And it kind of just like all goes to shit because she's like, why am I doing this? She's grown up enough that she's like done with the choices everybody else has made for her. They go into this thing called the right in the world that she lives in. And after the rite, everybody who is like chosen gets to ascend. And when people ascend, they are blessed by the gods and they are blessed with immortal life. But there's a lot of things she doesn't know. <laughs> and this just kind of opens up a door when she meets this boy named Hawk, who is a, her new royal guard. And he has all these answers that she never thought she would get. There is just a whole lot of stuff. I'm not gonna tell you anymore because you need to discover it for yourself. It is like beautiful. The next book I read I had lots of conflicting emotions about but I ended up leaving it with a four star rating and that is The Sorcerer Air by Cinda Williams Chima and this was the fifth and final book in the Air series that she has. <sighs> Take a deep breath. This I don't can't tell you what happened in the first three books because I read them like two three years ago. This one and the Enchanter Air I left because they follow a new kind of storyline as well as new characters and the Dragon Air which is the book the third book kind of finished off in like a trilogy feeling so I never had really any interest to read these two and I think that if I would have had the interest to read them too it would have been amazing and incredible and fun to read but since that I had left it for so long and in my mind the story had ended and the characters had no more forward motion it just kind of fell flat for me and that's kind of my own fault I'm not gonna lie but in this one we follow Thorncliffe survivors who were part of a commune in Brazil. All the parents died and half of most of the kids died. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people died because they think they were poisoned. But after they died their spirits were left to wander the world. So all the people who did survive, all the kids who lived, end up, how do I put this? They have these amulets that can now see the dead floating spirits and they go after them to try and kill them before they take over dead bodies. And that is basically 
the gist of what's happening in this book. It's very weird. I don't know. I'll keep it for now. We'll see. The next book I read I will not be talking about and that is because it is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm just acknowledging that I read it. The fifth book that I read almost made it onto my favorites of the year. Like it should be there but I already have another one from this series on there so I was like I need to chill. And it is The Labyrinth of Drakes by Mary Brennan. This is a memoir by Lady Trent. This is the fourth book in the series. I think there's six. Five or six. This book is amazing. So Lady Trent, before she's called Lady Trent, at the end of this book she's finally called Lady Trent, but before that she is just Isabel and Isabel works her way up in the science community of natural history by studying dragons. She travels the world and each book that she has for her memoirs are a new adventure that she's done, a new dragon that she studies, a new species that she learns so much about. She also just learns so much about cultures and everything else that's going on. And the third book I think was my favorite because they were on a boat traveling the world and I'm a sucker for like piratey things. This one was close second after that because they're in the desert, she gets kidnapped for a second time, um, she gets married for a second time, the girl just like gets up to it. She knows what she wants and she goes for it and it's amazing. Now onto the disappointing reads. A three star read was Artemis by Andy Weir. I loved The Martian so much and this one sucked so bad to me. It is a town on the moon. They're the only town on the moon. They're called Artemis after the goddess. They actually mentioned it in here which is really cool. And our main character Jazz is a criminal. The only criminal really on the planet. She smuggles stuff in. She has no money because she, her she left her dad's house at a really young age and she has a lot of problems and her solutions to solve them are not great. She almost kills the entire town by accident trying to get some money. Like a million whatever their money is called. So it was just weird and I was glad to be done with it. And the last book, the most disappointing read, two stars, Red, White, and Royal Blue. I did mention this in my vlog, if you watch my December vlog, at the end of it. This is like a romance book with barely any romance. Not to mention Alex, the way that he is, I don't like it. I don't like the way that he is. I will be unhauling this book because not only is the cover fucked up, but I really truly am never gonna reread this. I don't recommend this to any of my friends who like romance books because it really truly wasn't a romance book. Alex turns everybody into a hateful, spiteful person. Everybody hates each other. They all yell at each other and I don't appreciate the way that they treat each other. It's rude. It's disappointing and I don't know what's going on. I'll give Casey McQuiston one more chance, but holy crap this was... <sighs> yeah, it was not fun. No, I did not like it. I only gave it two stars because there was some cute scenes that I did appreciate, but if that wasn't there then I would have given it one star. Still unhauling it though, I'm not keeping it. But thank you so much for watching. This is the fastest review ever because my camera started dying halfway through. My fastest wrap up. I also just want to get 2021 done and over with, so I'm trying to talk as fast as I possibly can to get it done and over with. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you all with the new year videos very soon. It's coming, I swear, I promise. Like I'm working my hardest. I think I have one more 2021 video after this and then we're good. Maybe two. And then we're moving on to the new year. Bye!